Well, good morning. It's a little bit coldy this morning, so I'm a bit wrapped up. We're continuing on with the commentary on the book of 2 Samuel, and we reached chapter 12, titled today, chapter 12, God Judges David's Sin. Even if you are, are a person after God's own heart, you cannot escape the impact of sin upon your life. It has to be dealt with. God sends a prophet to pronounce the punishment of, for King David and Bathsheba, who was the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And the Lord sent Nathan the prophet unto David, and came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing <coughs> save one little ewe lamb, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, as was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveller unto the rich man's house, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that come unto him. But he took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan the prophet, As the Lord lives, that man that has done such this thing shall surely die. At that stage he did not realize that he was pronouncing his own death. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity on the poor man. Now God could have sent Nathan to David to tell him he had sinned, but he sent him to hear a story so that David could see the injustice of what he had done so that he recognizes his own sin. So the Lord sent the prophet Daniel to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain city, one very rich, owning many flocks of sheep and herds of goats, and the other very poor, owning nothing but a little lamb he had managed to buy. It was his children's pet, and he fed it from his own plate and let it drink from his own cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. Recently a guest arrived at the man's house, but instead of killing the lamb from his own flocks for food for the traveller, he took the poor man's lamb, killed it and roasted it and served it up to his guests. David was furious. I swear by the living God, he vowed, any man that would do such a thing as this should be put to death. He shall repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole and for having no pity upon him. And then Nathan said to David, You are that man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hands of Saul, and I gave you thy master's house and the master's wives in thy bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. If that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto you such, such things. Wherefore have you despised the commandments of the Lord? to do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and you have taken his wife to be your wife, and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Then we have the conclusion and the promises that are coming from God. Now therefore, <coughs> the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of your own house, and I will take thy wives before your eyes, and give them unto your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this, of this son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all of Israel in public, 
before the sun. And Nathan said to and David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord has put away your sin. You shall not die. This is because David had said in verse 5, that the man that has done this thing shall die. Promise, how be it? Because this, by this deed sin you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan said to David, You are the rich man. The Lord God of Israel says, I made you king and saved you from the power of his soul. I gave you his palace and his wives and the kingdoms, two kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. And if that had not been enough, I would have given you much, much more. <coughs> Why then have you despised the laws of God and done this horrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah and stolen his wife. Conclusion. Therefore, murder shall be a constant threat of your family from this time forward. Make sure you notice the difference here. The difference between killing and murder. God is saying, you murdered him. Because you haven't... Therefore, murder shall be a constant threat in your family from this time forward. Because you have insulted me by taking Uriah's wife. I, the Lord God of Israel, vow that because of what you have done, I will cause your own household to rebel against you. I will give your wives to another man, and he will go to bed with them in public view. You did it in secret, but I will do this to you openly in the sight of all of Israel. Numbers 32.23 says, Your secret sins will find you out. I have sinned against the Lord, David confessed to Nathan. Now many people cannot understand this next part of scripture. Why should David, who sinned, be allowed to live and the innocent baby have to die? Then Nathan replied, Yes, but the Lord has forgiven you and you won't die for this sin. You won't die for this sin. But you have been, but you have given great opportunity to the enemies of the Lord to despise and blaspheme him. So your child shall die. What you sow, you shall reap. You sowed sin, so you shall reap sin. Therefore, the sin of the father shall be upon his children. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore unto David, and it was very sick. Therefore David besought God for the child. David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. Fulfilled promise. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of God feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not listen unto our voice. For how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But David saw that his servants whispered. David then perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said unto his children, sorry, unto his servants, is the child dead? And they said, Yes, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came into his own house and when he required it, they set bread before him and he did eat. <coughs> then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that you have done? You did fast and weep for the child while he was alive, but when the child was dead, you did rise and eat bread. Doesn't make sense. And he said, while the child was yet alive, 
I fasted and wept, for I said to myself, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now that the child is dead, wherefore shall I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Then Nathan returned to his home, and the Lord made Bathsheba's baby deathly sick. Now, for all of those people who state that God never put sickness upon people, please go back and read these scriptures again. Under certain situations, God does put sickness upon people. He put a tormenting spirit upon King Saul, and now here he has put a deadly sickness upon this child. David begged the Lord to spare the child and went without food and lay all night before the Lord on the bare earth. The leaders of the nation pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. Then on the seventh day, that is the day of completeness, the baby died. David's aides were afraid to tell him. He was so broken up about the baby being sick, they said. What will he do to himself when we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw them whispering amongst themselves, he realized what had happened. Is the baby dead? he asked. Yes, they replied, he is. Then David got up off the ground, washed himself, brushed his hair, changed his clothes and went into the tabernacle of the Lord and worshipped him. Then he returned to the palace and ate a meal. His aides were all amazed. Because what he was doing was completely against culture. When a person dies, then you go into mourning. But he was mourning while the child was alive. Now the child is dead. He's happy. We don't understand you, they told him. While the baby was still living, you wept and refused to eat. But now that the baby is dead, you have stopped your mourning and started eating again. And David replied, I fasted and wept while the child was alive, for I said to myself, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me, and in his mercy he will let the child live. But why should I fast when the child is dead? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And David comforted Beersheba his wife and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and called his name Jedida, because of the Lord. Jedidia is better pronunciation. Then David comforted Bathsheba, and when he slept with her, she conceived and gave birth to a son, and named him Solomon. And the Lord loved this baby and sent congratulations and blessings through Nathan the prophet. David nicknamed the baby Jedidiah, meaning beloved of jo Jehovah, because of the Lord's interest. And while this was happening, Joab was still at war against the um, Ammonites. And Joab fought against Rabar and the children of Ammon and took the royal city. And Joab sent messages to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah and have taken the city of orders. <coughs> Conclusion. Now, therefore, gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called after my name. <coughs> and David gathered all of the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. And he took the king's crown off his head. The weight thereof was a talent of gold with precious stones. It was set on David's head, and he brought the spoil of the city in great abundance. And he brought forth the people there and put them under saws and under arrows of iron and made them pass through brick kilns. And thus did he unto all of the cities of the children of Ammon. So David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. So, meanwhile, Joab and the army were successfully ending the siege of Rabbah. 
the capital of Ammon. Joab sent messages to tell David, Rambah and this beautiful harbour is ours. So now bring the rest of the army and finish the job so that you will get the credit for the victory instead of me. Here was a general giving honour and credit to his king. So David led his army to Rabah and captured it. Tremendous amounts of loot were carried back to Jerusalem and David took the king of Rabah's crown, a $50,000 treasure made from solid gold set with gems and placed it upon his own head. He made, he made slaves of the people of the city and made them labour with saws, picks and axes and work in the brick kilns. That is the way that he treated all of the cities of the Ammonites. Then David and the army returned to Jerusalem.